Thank you. Uh, Paul Mozina, uh, 767 Roker Street. And I sent you an email back around mid-July uh, recapping um, the data that I've been uh, analyzing from the Emergency Communications of Southern Oregon. You might recall that uh, last June, I provided you the data for 2018 through 2022. And then this year, I got the 2023 data to add to that mix so we can see the, the continuity of the data. And I did send you that uh, recap on July 16th. I didn't hear back from anybody, but I did get a, a, an invitation to a meeting from Jackson Burris, and I appreciated that opportunity to sit to talk on Zoom with Jackson and uh, and uh, Dr. Mahan. And uh, um, so then I did send you a follow-up email yesterday because I, I, I was very disappointed at the results of that meeting with uh, with Dr. Mahan and, and uh, Mr. Burris in that they, they really don't think there's anything to see here. I, and I'm... I, uh, I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit, but what I'm referring to is the high, the increase of EMS calls in Jackson County since 2021. And they, they kind of made the, the excuse that, well, we, we're seeing, uh, we had a population, uh, the demographics have changed, we have older people. And I sent, I provided you details in the email showing the demographics from the, t uh, the latest uh, survey, showing that in, in um, uh, the, the, the age group 65 and over did increase from 2010 to 2022. So the age group 65 and over did increase, but in 2021, it was a very tiny increase. In 2022, there was actually a 1.2% decrease in the population in Jackson County. And, and in the three years, 2018 through 2020, the, the numbers were flat in that age group. There were no extra EMS calls in that age group in those three years. But beginning in 2021, we saw at, at, through 2023, uh, there was a 21% increase in EMS calls from the, 16, uh, the 69 and over age group. And then when we look at the vaccination data from, from Oregon, we see that this, is the age, this age group had 95% compliance with the, va with the COVID vaccinations and 45% compliance with the boosters. So this is the highest vaccinated population uh, demographic in the state. They have uh, the highest um, incidence of EMS calls since 21, uh, 2021, since the rollout of the vaccinations. And so the, uh, the, the, some folks will make the point that it's demographics that are driving this increase in EMS calls. And I'm, I'm trying to say, no, the demographics cannot explain that. And then some folks will say, well, it's the, um, the fentanyl. Since 2021, we've had a huge uh, increase in fentanyl. Well, I'll, I'll make the case that people 69 years and older are not the people that are abusing fentanyl. Okay, I think we can all kind of assume that, that that's true. This is the fentanyl. We can't use fentanyl as an excuse for why the EMS calls have gone up in this age group. And they've gone up in all the age groups. And I'm picking up the, the 65 and older uh, because they're the most significant age group that was affected. And, and uh, some folks will say, well, you know, the, the vaccinations are just, uh, um, it's a conversation between the doctor and the patient. Well, the, you know very well that Jackson County had uh, uh, vaccine mandates that were dictated to them by the by uh, the federal and state and, and different entities, but they were enforced on the Jackson County uh, employees, and they had to jump through some hoops if they wanted to get away from it. They were they were coerced. Military people were coerced. Over 500 colleges in the United States had vaccination mandates. This is an experimental treatment that was forced upon the population. And it's been proven that it's not safe and effective. And if you look at the vaccine uh, uh, adverse event reporting system, the VAR system, then uh, I'll just quickly show you the graph. And I know it'll be hard to see, but maybe it'll remind you to check the email that I sent for uh, so you can take a closer look at it. But um, th this, is, this is the, um, uh, if you see, it's hard to see, I know, but the beginning with 2021, the number of vaccine injuries reported skyrocketed and and the harvard study and and i think it was 1999 reported that only one percent of vaccine injuries are reported to vars okay only one percent are reported and the, and in 2021 the number of injuries skyrocketed and i also provided you a graph with the um the vaccine injuries of, of folks that live in oregon and and again the uh, a large uh, percent of the uh, uh, injuries were in the, in the age group 69 and over. The highest vaccinated age group has the most EMS calls, and they have the most reports in the virus system. And I, I just I just want to uh, summarize by saying that I'm disappointed that the Jackson County, the, uh, my conversation with Jackson and Dr. Mahan resulted in no nothing. They're not going to do anything. They're totally comfortable with what the uh, Jackson County Health and Human Services Department is doing vis-a-vis -vis the EMS calls. They don't feel like there's anything to see. There's nothing to investigate. There's nothing to do. Uh, it's, I think it's appalling. And I don't want to have to come back here in 2024 with the, t uh, 
2025 with the 2024 data and, and, we, and show the same trend. And we, didn't, and we did nothing. When are we going to react? When are we going to notice? When are we, are we, we going to stop ignoring what's going on with these EMS calls? But uh, anyways, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to submit my comments to the recorder to the, be added to the record. Thank you very much. Thank you.